Finally, let's look at the extension of the morphological algorithms to grayscale images. So we're going to assume that we have um, grayscale images like this, where, uh, for example, I've shown the profile through that horizontal slice as um, this curve here. So here, our structuring element is also an image, can either be a um, grayscale image itself or a flat or binary image here. For this lecture, I'm just going to focus on the flat or uh, constant binary uh, structuring elements. So the definition of dilation in this case, with in this case we're focusing on flat, is the uh, maximum, the local maximum in every region. So in other words, we we will we'll still reflect our um, structuring element. We'll slide it past the function. At each position, we'll take the maximum within that region, and then we'll output that. So if this is the intensity of f along a certain slice, I'm just showing you a one-dimensional slice here. Here's our structuring element, which is just um, a, a flat disk here. Um, what I'm going to do is essentially um, drop that structuring element from the top. So here I've shown that um, this goes down until it touches the, um, the value f here. So the local maximum within this region is uh, this point right here. So I do that at every point, as you can see. And then that's my output. It's basically wherever I had those local maximums, namely this here. So it has uh, increased the overall intensity by taking these local maximums. The definition of erosion is taking the local minimum. So we slide the structuring element past the uh, values of f. At each position, we take a local minimum. So essentially, we can think of that as coming up from the bottom until we get to the point where the structuring element touches the function f. And that essentially uh, reduces the overall intensity um, by taking the local minimum. So an example on a real image, um, here is the input image, here is the erosion, so it makes everything darker, lower sub values, here is the dilation, so it makes things uh, brighter. Um, so we can put those together just like we do with for the binary images um, to form opening and closing operators. So opening is erosion followed by dilation, closing is dilation followed by erosion. So just like we had an interpretation in the binary case, we have a interpretation in the opening in the grayscale case. Opening says um, push the structuring element up from below, take the highest values achieved at every point. So for example here uh, on this profile, this is the highest that the structuring element can go, and we take the union of all those. So we essentially get back the same curve, but we've removed small bright details. Closing is pushing the element down from above against the top side, and we take the lowest values at every point. So we essentially get back the same curve where we remove small and dark details. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's an example um, of using opening and closing to uh, do a interesting segmentation problem. So I've created a image, um, I've taken an image of grass or straw here and put some uh, little shapes here, I'll call them pennies. And let's say we want to segment those from the image. So those um, pennies are not brighter or darker than the rest of the image, but they are different in the texture. So um, let me read that in. That's a color image, actually. So let me convert that to grayscale. Uh, 
And let me just show you the profile um, using IM profile so you can see. Um, let's see, let me pick. Um, oh, how about this, this slice right here? So I'm just going to draw a line through the image. And what I've done here is um, here is the, the penny or the coin, that region. You know, it's in synthetic, so it's obviously exactly constant. Um, but as you can see, it's um, larger than all the other structures in here, although not necessarily darker or brighter. So what we're going to do is open the image. Namely, we're going to push a structuring element up that's about this size. At this location, it fits completely inside this part here. But all these other pieces, um, it's not going to get that high. So we're going to see that this part is more or less the brightest part of the opened image. So I'm going to, I have to find a structuring element that's just smaller than that uh, penny that I'm looking for. Um, I've just looked by hand and it's like a um, little bit larger than radius uh, uh, 6 here. So I'll go ahead and open that. Oops. And as you can see, it um, does a pretty good job of finding the pennies that are in here. It's basically all the places where that structuring element can push up pretty far to find those regions. So then to segment it, I could just threshold it. I could say, um, you know, by hand or with some automatic means, find the places that are uh, bright there. Okay, one final algorithm I'd like to look at is the top hat transform, um, which is defined as um, opening the image and then subtracting it from the original. So this uh, leaves details, only details that are smaller than the structuring element. So there's a nice example in MATLAB um, that I'll show here in a second. First though, um, just to see why this works, um, let's say I have a profile like this. Where this is the um, profile of the image through some horizontal slice. And I am interested in these bumps here. So what I would like to do is create an image of just the bumps. If I use a structuring element that is larger than um, my uh, elements here, then the opened um, image will be the same thing except with those bumps removed. So this will be F opened with B. So if I subtract the those two, I just get back um, the bumps. Okay, so that's the idea. So let's take a look at an example So here's an example of grains of rice. Um, the background is changing, though, so it is not um, constant like that. So it's difficult, for example, to segment those pieces. If I were to say, well, let me just do IM tool, and then um, sort of interactively change the threshold um, with this tool. So it's difficult for me to find a, um, a value 
that segments all of the rice grains from the background, as you can see. So I would like to remove the background and just leave the rice grains. Okay, so I've found that um, the rice grains are bigger than a disk of radius 15. So I will open the image with a structuring element that's a disk of radius 15. And that gives me um, the background. Actually, let me display it without the empty brackets here. Um, so anyway, you can see the I've captured the background here. Um, it's smoothly varying. So if I subtract that from the original image, that leaves me with just um, the rice grains. So at this point, it's easier for me to uh, threshold. Let me just show that. If I were to use this tool, um, there's a nice break between the rice grains and the background.